So in this video, we're going to start creating our rope texture for the twine going down the handle. But before we get started, I do want to make one important note here. Anytime you're working with the texture or you learn how to create a texture or you're trying to figure out how to create a texture, it is always a great idea to take notes. The reason for this is you want to build up a texture library for yourself, but not just a texture library, but how you went about achieving those textures. Let's say right now we're creating this rope twine for our handle and we don't need to create another rope twine or a rope texture for let's say a year from now. So between now and a year, am I going to remember how I went about creating that rope texture that I really liked? Well, I might not remember, but if I create a step-by-step -step notes of how I did it and I saved that inside the project that I know had that particular rope twine in it, I can go back to that project file, open up those steps, and continue working on my current project using those steps to recreate that texture step-by-step. -step. So don't only just create a texture library, create a script of how you went about creating that texture library, a step-by-step script or tutorial for yourself so you can remind yourself. So I'm going to open up and I'm going to use Notepad++ and you can see I've arranged my windows to where I can quickly switch between Photoshop and Notepad++ or any text editor that you want to use. And I'm going to set this off to the side so that way I can quickly work between them as I do steps. So here we have our UV snap rope that we set up in the previous tutorial. And we're going to go ahead and create another file. So I'm going to file, I'm going to select new and I'm going to set this to half the resolution of what I have my original texture set to. So this I know is 4096 by 4096. So I want to create a new file that's 2048 by 2048. And I'm going to make a note of this. I'm going to say step one. So I'll say one, create new file at half resolution. Resolution. And then I'll press enter. I'll go two. And now I'm ready for my next step. And I also want the background contents can be white. You want it to be color mode RGB. You can add sub notes in here if you wanted to for that. I'm not going to worry about that. And I'm just going to click OK. So now I have a file that's at half the resolution of my output file. So this is what I'm creating and I have one that's half the resolution of that. Now the next step I want to do is I want to make sure my secondary and my primary colors are set up correctly for the half tone that we're going to be using. So I want to set the foreground color to the base texture. So I'll make a step of that. So I will say set primary color to background color of output and that'll tell me that I need this color to be the same color as this background color. So I can just select this image here, click on that, and now I have the primary color set to the background color of the output. This is our output. So now I have that set and then I'll go ahead and set the secondary color to black. Set secondary color to black. And I screwed up here with my numbering. So I'll change it to a three. And once I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and press enter. So now I need to select the little color swatch here, changer, and change this to black. So that's 0, 0, 0 all the way down. Click OK. Then I will switch it back because this is my primary. That's my secondary. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to drop this list down. I'm going to select filter gallery. And I'm going to look for a folder called sketch. I want it to be set to half tone. So I want to make notes of these. So I'm going to drag this off to the side. I'm going to say for step four, I'm going to select filter gallery. And then step five, click on sketch. And then I'm going to click on halftone pattern, right? So these are my steps. The settings for the halftone pattern, I'll go ahead and click over here. I'm going to say that I know it's halftone pattern. I want it to be size 3, contrast 13, pattern type line. So I'll make notes of that. And I'll hit a tab, and I'm just going to make sub notes here. I will say size 3. Then I set the contrast to 13. And I set the pattern type to line. All right, so now I'm creating a step-by-step. 
series here and I have that all set up. Once that's set up, you have size of three, contrast, and align with halftone pattern. Select it, go ahead and click OK. And once that's done, you're going to get this interesting looking pattern here. And we need to make some more adjustments to this. So I'm going to go up to Filter. I'm going to go down to Noise and I'm going to select Add Noise. Now I know that I want to add noise. So I'm going to come over here and make a note of that. And press six. And I'm going to say filter, add noise. So now I know I need to go up to filter and select add noise. And I'm going to set the amount to 45 at Gaussian and monochromatic. And I'll make some sidestep notes here. So I will say amount 45%. And I will set the type of distribution, distri if I can spell distribution <laughs> to Gaussian. So I'll say Gaussian. And I will check monochromatic. All right, and then I'll go ahead and click OK. So I'm happy with all these settings. Go ahead and click OK. And I need to select all, so I will marquee select, or I will select my marquee selection. I'll hit Control A. So I will hit 7, select all. And then I will hit eight because I know the next step is I'm going to rotate by 40, negative 45 degrees. So I'll say negative 45 degrees. So I'm going to hit uh, control A and then I'm going to hit control plus T. That's going to put me into free transform mode. I'm going to hold down shift. And you can see that the mouse is kind of changing as I mouse over these areas. And I can see that this is a rotate in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to rotate this by negative 45 degrees and press enter. It's going to freeze that rotation. Now I need to select just a portion inside of the middle. So I'm just going to tell myself that I need to select need, the needed portion from the middle. So I'll just go ahead and come over here, press 9, select necessary portion from middle. All right. And so I'll go ahead and do that. So I'll come over and I'm going to select this. So now I'm with that select, I'm going to hit Control plus C. And then I'm going to come over to the UV snap rope. And I think I have enough notes here because at this point, by this point, I'm going to say, oh, OK, there's that texture. There's that rope texture. So I won't have to make any more notes because I know now I have the portion that I need. So I'll come over here to my UV snapshot. I will select the layer below the UV snapshot. I'll hit Control V. And I'm going to hit Control T, and I'm going to go ahead and rotate this and get it in a 90 degree. I held down Shift to get an exact rotation of 90 degrees. And I'm going to, it's actually negative 90, but I'm going to hold down. Now I want to scale it uniformly to cover the center area. So I'm going to hold down Alt plus Shift, and then I'm going to just drag with my mouse. And that's going to drag it. And I want to make sure I cover the entire UV section, so I may have to adjust the placement of it just a little. And that looks pretty good right about there. And I'll press Enter. And you're going to see it's going to clean up a little bit. Now I need to hide the UV snapshot. And there is our twine texture. So I'll go ahead and save this out. I'm going to save this out as a JPEG. Do not save this out as a PNG. You will lose color information when we do the projection if you save as a PNG. So I recommend just go ahead, save yourself the trouble of figuring it out and, or messing with it. And you can fool with it, fool with different image types and projections to see what you come up with. I usually just use JPEG. I know you lose a little bit with JPEG. It is a lossy compression, but that's fine for this because I don't mind losing a little bit of information from this twine. So I'll go ahead and click Save As. I'm going to go to my desktop. In fact, I'm going to actually go to our Source Images folder. So I'm going to go to the Maya Search Tutorials. I'm going to select Source Images. And this I'm going to save as a rope underscore D. So this is my diffuse for my rope. And I'm going to save it as a JPEG. So select JPEG rope underscore D and click Save. And I'll set the compression up to the highest, largest file. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. So now I have the texture that I needed for our rope. But in order to finalize this, I'm also going to need a normal map for this texture. So I can get some of the bump detail of this texture whenever we do the projection. I want this to have a little bit more detail to it to really polish up the look of it. In order to do that, we're going to need a plugin from NVIDIA for Photoshop to create a normal map based on this texture. Now, if you're not using 
Photoshop throughout this tutorial series. I highly recommend you get Photoshop. It is an industry standard application. Just about every gaming studio uses Photoshop that I can think of at some point in their production pipeline. So I definitely recommend you do get it. So now I need to keep track of this process that I went about for creating this texture. Because again, you want to always keep track of any special textures that you make for your model. The process that you went about making it, if it is something that you can keep track of, make notes. This is very important down the road. You will think yourself like, man, I am so happy with me that I went through the process of keeping track of how I created this particular texture a year from now when I needed it. You know, so I'm going to go up to file. I'm going to click save as, and I'm going to go to the Maya Sword tutorial folder. And I might just create a new folder here. So I'll just uh, right click. I'm going to select new folder and I will call this for instance texture underscore instructions so now I have these texture instructions for any textures that I create this on it and I'll just go ahead and grab this and I'm gonna call this the rope underscore D so I know how I made this rope diffuse now in the next video what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get that plugin installed set up our normal map and save that out if you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.